Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we test our engineering skills against an adversary. Today, we're going to test out the deception strategy. This includes building three decoys and one follow-up ship to try to take out a spat, or spider gang for short. Now you can kind of see them in the distance if you look at the map, they're in red over there. They're approximately 16 kilometers away, and they seem to follow the same path over and over again around our battleship. Periodically, they send two drones at a time to attack us. I've gathered a lot of intel on this, and I think if we go and attack them right after we destroy two of their drones, we should have a good chance at taking out the freighter. First, let's start with a regular rotor, and I'm going to attach, of course, a small rotor head. That way we can build small decoys. A decoy itself is really nothing to write home about. It's just a ball that has a transmitting antenna in it, and it's used to trick enemy AI ships into thinking that it is your primary ship. It's the same way as they target, say, your thrusters on an aircraft or ship, or the way they target your cockpit. In this sense, we're trying to get them to target the decoys instead of us. That way we can slip past them and attack their freighter or main ship. Now I could just start out with just a decoy, just like this, but the decoy itself would have to be dropped along the way by another ship. That's completely plausible, however, it will get destroyed fairly quickly. This is why I'm going to build a basic small drone ship around them and then fly them out to the location we want them at. For this, I am surrounding them in the heavy steel squares or blocks on all sides. It does take more material, but it'll ensure they don't get destroyed as fast. Now just have to add some battery power to it. I don't want the batteries to stick out because then they'll get destroyed. I'm not going to put a power source on here because I think just having a few batteries should be able to power the antenna and the thrusters long enough for us to get it into position. Essentially, the decoy does not need electricity to operate. So you're just using your power to get it into a position to distract the enemy. Even if the battery power fails, the decoy will still attract enemy and not our ship, theoretically. There's one antenna installed. Should add some more batteries though. Yeah, I think I'm going to add it equally around it in order to keep the balance of this small drone. Otherwise, we could pitch to the left, to the right, up or down, depending on how your weight is sitting. 
and it has a drastic effect on the smaller ships versus a large ship. There we go, that looks about equal, except for maybe the top over here. I think I'll add one to this. Okay, now with everything symmetrical, I'm going to start adding some of the other items that we need. This includes the actual drone or emote. Now we can control this darn thing. And then, of course, the camera on the front, because this is going to be your eye in the sky, in a sense, on where you're going to be going. Of course, our drone is going to drift too far away from the battleship itself, so we're going to have to guide it by line of sight. I do think by having all these extra heavy blocks, this small drone ship will be able to move fairly decent, but it will also protect all our primary components. So if we have to move it farther out in order to draw more attention, we can. If you really wanted to though, it might be a lot easier just to make a large decoy and have a larger ship just drop them in place. Or simply have all the materials, cruise over to the spot that you want to place the decoy and then set it down. I recommend though, if you're going to do this, turn off your antenna on your ship before you travel to that destination. Otherwise you may attract enemy fire before you can get it built. Just trimming in a few pieces here and there. Extra reinforcement, as they say. As I said earlier, there will be three of these decoys placed out at approximately 500 meters from each other. This is the third and final decoy that I'm going to place. Hmm, I forgot we don't have a gyro. Better put one of those on there. We won't be able to steer this thing. Okay, for this I'm just using ion drives. These small ion drives won't push us too fast, but we will be able to maneuver all the way to our location in order to attract the enemy. We don't want to put these things too close because we want the enemy to kind of come to us. We just need one in each direction. Can't really put a forward one on there, mainly because the camera's there, unless we put one lower than the camera. First, let me take this holder off. 
Now that we're disconnected, we're just kind of floating here in space. It's a lot easier. And one ion drive. Yeah, I think that should do it for now. Let's see if we can get this thing to float where we want it. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You might want a control panel on here because sometimes when you build these ships and it's connected to a larger ship, you have to redesignate that this small ship belongs to you. Otherwise, you can't control it. Looks like the camera's working. All right, nice and easy outside of this door. If you've watched some of my other videos, you can tell I'm not that great of a driver. I'm more of an engineer at heart than an operator. You can see in the distance, possibly, that you have uh, two other decoys all the way out there. One says Antenna 2 and the other one says Decoy 2. I probably should change the other one's name to Decoy 1 so I don't confuse myself. All right, we safely made it out of there, kind of. I'm just going to line up with decoy two, get within range of it, and then push ourselves away from it by about 500 meters or so. This gives us a trifecta of three decoys in a row, and hopefully it'll be the nice bait for our adversary. So once they get attracted to it, we can switch out and attack them with our other ship. For this, I've never really encountered one of these spats before. So my goal is to just start out with a small ship that's highly capable and see if we can take it out with one of those. Instead of building a huge ship and have a lot of wasted resources because we didn't need that much. Plus, smaller ships create more of a challenge and sometimes it's good to have that challenge. I call this little ship my chum. Looks kind of like a bottom feeding catfish with the weird front end and a kind of a fat body to it. I put an auto cannon on the back just in case any of these pesky drones try to attack us. But it's real guns are hidden. Inside these doors, I have mounted four auto Gatling guns and a rail gun in the center. The piston kind of does make the whole ship move, but once you get it going, it levels out. For a small ship, it's quite a bit of firepower. I used all heavy blocks on this ship also, which makes the ship heavy enough that this railgun doesn't kick it back at all. For now, I'm going to put it back until we get to our destination. I don't need that to become the target of the adversary. Well, until we get to that point. This ship is also powered by four small nuclear reactors. I've tested it earlier and it does provide enough electricity to quickly recharge our railgun, but also allow us to continue to fly. As you can see, that's number three, the one we just put out there. I'm going to head to that one, and we're going to remote control it from this ship and move it closer to our enemy. As I mentioned, the spat likes to go through this location back and forth and back and forth with their freighters. Oh, there it is on my radar already. 
So we're going to move this little decoy closer to it. Not too close, but close enough that it might attract some drones. I noticed the drones come scouting when we get within about 12 to 14 kilometers from the spat. Just got to maneuver a little bit here. And I think that should do it for that one. Mm, already see the drones in the distance. We already attracted that attention. Oh, here they come. Better get out these guns. I probably should have kept them out earlier. I didn't realize they were going to come along at that fast of a rate. Looks like we're taking on some fire. Oh, that was close. Uh, I get you. Oh, I get you. Oh, he's right in range for a rail gun. Oh, that one hurt. Come on. I think that's about it. That one rail shot really takes them out. Just demolish their entire drone. Amazing. I think the downside is, with the auto cannon being on the back and lower than what the main gun is, it can't shoot over the main gun to assist. So in the future, I may have to raise it up a bit just so we can have a full range of shooting. See, like now it just started shooting again, but it's just shooting at the debris, whatever was remaining, maybe a controller. I think we can still head forward. Ooh, looks like something's on fire over here. It's amazing how many times I play this game and still catch fire. It's just crazy. I don't have enough material to actually fix it, but at least we put the fire out. Let's continue forward. We took out those drones, and it's only been about 10 minutes. These drones only come around every half hour, so I'm thinking as we get closer, it sends out more and more and more drones. This is crazy. You can see all four of my Gatling firing at this thing, but I think I'm just aiming way too high for it. Oh, man. Shots fired, shots fired. Oh, there's some fire again. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, oh, they destroyed our cockpit. Oh, man, I'm not going to be able to fix this and get back in. Uh, hmm, what to do, what to do? Nope, can't get it back into it. Can't make the ship fire. Didn't put a remote on it or anything. There's still drones out there. Everything else seems fine. May have to just pick this up afterwards. Um... I better get the heck out of here and try to find my original ship. There's decoy three, so I'll head towards that one. Maybe it'll distract them from hitting me. Let's go, let's go. Ooh, that's getting real close. That is super close. Come on, we can make it there. Ooh, they're just surrounding the place over there. I'm not worried about the battle station or my little cargo hauler because they both are equipped with Gatling guns and auto cannons. Yeah, they're coming on pretty close. I'm sure if I stopped, they would try to shoot me again. I don't know why I'm still carrying this welder. I should have switched over to a rifle or something, at least shoot back while I'm flying. Well, better late than ever. Let's see if we can attract him over to the battle station. So 
So the deception, I'd say, didn't really work out that great. We lost our small ship. Our decoys are perfectly fine, but nobody really cared about them. Maybe it does make a difference whether you're using a small decoy or a large decoy. I think in the future I'll have to try out with the large decoy instead to see if we can get more cover from them. Right now I just feel like I've become the bait. Come on, keep following me. Almost there. It was an interesting small skirmish, but I think we're going to do a lot better with the next one. Now, how do I get back in there? Oh, it looks like they're still chasing us. Right, here they come. Let's see if our guns can take them out. That's a lot more firepower than what they had. Also might be a huge difference between a small ship and a large ship is how much firepower you're able to throw at the enemy. Obviously, this auto cannon takes a lot larger shells. Instead of a cartridge of auto cannon shells, it takes individual shells and has a lot bigger punch. The Gatling cannons are about the same, though. Oh, it doesn't look like we endured any damage from that. Those small drones don't do much to this big ship. They do love attacking my cargo hauler for some reason, though, so I'm going to go check that out. It's been attacked several times so far. And I've had to rebuild almost the complete top of it over and over and over again. I don't see any enemy out here. It should be safe to fly across. It looks like it hit a few parts here and there. There we go. Fix it all back up. Didn't take very much. These guns are pretty aggressive also because I have auto cannons on the top and Gatlings on the sides. So unless you're going against a large ship, you can pretty much defend yourself with this. You don't need necessarily artillery or anything like that for self-defense. These ones work just fine. Next time, we'll be ready for them. Until then, leave your comments in the comment section below and let me know what you think about the deception strategy. Thanks for watching.